Hey everyone. In my previous video, we took a journey into the backend, tracing a request as it traveled through DNS servers, CDNs, firewalls, load balancers, and finally landed at backend services and databases. But today, we are turning our attention to the front end, where everything starts with that single click or tap. We'll explore how the front end handles events, create requests, and processes responses to give you that smooth, seamless experience. This time, we are not just looking at the basics. We'll also discuss some popular front-end frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue.js, and touch on advanced techniques that make modern web apps fast and responsive. So let's get started. All right, let's start with the click. When you click a button on a web page, the browser detects this action through the DOM or document object model. This triggers an event like a click event, which JavaScript or a front-end framework captures. In vanilla JavaScript, you might use at event listener to listen for these events. The event listener detects a click and the send request function is called. The event handler is like a traffic controller. It knows what to do when someone arrives or clicks. Modern frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue simplify this with their own event handling mechanism. For example, in React, you can attach an event directly in JSX. The handle click function is fired when the button is clicked. Frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue make this process more efficient and structured. They ensure that only the parts of the page affected by the event are re-rendered, saving time and resources. Think of it as the framework acting as a highly efficient manager, only making the necessary updates without disturbing the whole page. After capturing the event, the next step is creating and sending the request. You might use REST or GraphQL to structure this request. REST is the traditional or maybe the most popular way where you send HTTP requests such as GET, POST, PORT, DELETE to specific endpoints. GraphQL is a relatively newer approach, which lets clients ask for exactly the data they need, saving bandwidth and increasing efficiency. Now, I have made a detailed video on GraphQL and how it works, so please do check it out if you want to get into the details of it. All right, now most frameworks offer easy integration for handling this request. For example, React has libraries like Axios or Fetch, and Angular has its built-in HTTP client service to make HTTP requests super simple. Here is an example of a GraphQL query in React using the Apollo client package. Here, user query sends the request as soon as the component loads and automatically re-renders the UI once the data is fetched. Angular and Vue have similar capabilities, giving you the flexibility to choose REST or GraphQL, whichever fits best. And once the request is sent, JavaScript doesn't just sit and wait. It hands off the request and moves on, thanks to the JavaScript event loop. This allows our applications to stay responsive by handling requests asynchronously. Frameworks make managing this async behavior easier. In React, you would use hooks like useEffect to run asynchronous operations, while Angular has services and observables through RxJS to handle async streams, making it simpler to handle data as it arrives. Vue 2 has a similar concept with lifecycle hooks that help you trigger actions when the component mounts or data updates. Once the server sends a response, we need to process and display it. Typically, the server responds with JSON data, which the frontend passes into JavaScript objects to update the UI. Frameworks shine here by making it easy to bind data to the DOM. For example, in React, any state change using set state will automatically trigger a render. Angular uses two-way data binding, meaning any change in the data model instantly reflects in the UI. Vue is also known for its reactive data properties, where changes to data immediately update the DOM. For example, in React, updating products will trigger a re-render, and the new data is displayed without you needing to manipulate the DOM manually. Now, let's talk about retaining the data. What if a user adds items to a cart, refreshes the page, and the data disappears? Local storage solves the issue. Using local storage.set item and local storage.get item in JavaScript, it lets you to save data on the client side, like shopping cart that persists even when the user leaves the page. For instance, in vanilla JavaScript, when the user returns, you can retrieve this data and repopulate the cart. And for managing more complex states across components, popular libraries come into play. Redux for React is ideal for managing global state in large apps. NGRX in Angular is built on RxJS providing reactive state management. Vuex for Vue is a dedicated state management pattern for Vue apps. Imagine an online store with multiple filters, sorting options, and a cart. Redux can synchronize all these states so users see consistent data no matter what they navigate. Making an app responsive is crucial today, as users might be on mobile phone, tablet, or desktop. Frameworks provide tools to handle responsive design easily. So CSS media queries lets you apply styles based on screen size, but frameworks can help manage these styles across components. 
React and Angular support lazy loading of components, so parts of the app load only when needed, reducing initial load times. And you can also set up service workers in frameworks to cache assets, making repeat visits faster. For example, if your app has a lot of images, a service worker can cache these images locally, so they don't need to be downloaded again on each visit. This improves the user experience by making the app feel faster and more responsive. And there you have it, a full journey through the front-end lifecycle of a request, with a sprinkle of framework magic along the way. Whether you are working with React, Angular, or Vue, these tools give you the power to handle user interactions, manage asynchronous requests, and keep your app fast and responsive. And if you are interested in taking front-end architecture even further, do check out my video on micro front-ends, where we dive into the strategies for building scalable, modular front-ends that work independently, but fit together seamlessly. In the next video, we'll dive even deeper into one of these frameworks, breaking down more advanced topics like component life cycles, state management, and testing strategies. And if you have enjoyed this walkthrough, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more tech deep dives. Thanks for watching.